Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. I'm thrilled to have you joining me all today because we have a very special guest here. He is one of the leaders and innovators of Equilife, Reimagining Health Conferences, and the founder of Integrative Health Practitioner Trainings. So we have Dr. Stephen Cabral. He's a board certified doctor of naturopathy and founder of the Cabral Wellness Institute and stephencabral.com. At 17 years old, Stephen Cabral was diagnosed with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. Every day, he suffered endlessly for many years. It was only after Stephen traveled all over the world and discovered how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine did he understand how to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. Welcome, Dr. Steve Cabral. It's a pleasure to see you again here for an interview. We saw each other recently at your event and just from my heart, very impressed with your leadership and the community that you are creating. So how are you today? What are you excited about today? I'm doing great. So uh, really appreciate you having me here on your show and great to see you again, uh, as always. So excited about today? Well, we are now moving into probably like you as well, that busy season where people are excited about gearing up with new goals, new things that they want to attain in their life. And of course, uh, that's what I'd love to be able to help people with. Absolutely. So a lot of the products that you create are to support, right, from nutrients and um, different support kits, right? Everybody here on the show knows I'm a huge fan of clearing out parasites, <laughs> And it took me a really long time to do it. But when I did it, my hair, skin and nails shifted dramatically. And I love your report, your your approach with things like SIBO, with things like parasites, with things like heavy metal detox, mold, all of those things. So you you've really have created some incredible products. And by the way, everyone listening, head on over to the schoolofradiance.com go to the biohacking page, you are going to see Dr. Cabral's products there. You also make incredible coffee. So it's like, what don't you do? And you're just creating this community of practitioners to help others thrive. How do you thrive though? You're doing all these things. You're beautiful family man. Your energy is gorgeous. You're definitely radiant. What's your secret? So mine is finding something that I truly love, that I'm passionate about, and then getting up every single day and working towards that worthy goal. So it's not one of those things that you can ever fully achieve or attain either. So there's always more to work towards. So there's more for myself to learn and understand. I'm someone that loves to read. I love to research. Um, that, that will always continue. But I also love to teach. So as I continue to learn and grow, I've been doing this now for 25 years. I've met with uh, my team and I well over 300,000 one-on-one appointments. Uh, We've run over a half a million at-home functional medicine labs. So as I continue to do that, it's not like the labs are necessarily going to change, but what will change is our ability to help people in a more precise space manner. And so what I mean by that is the more data that we continue to have, the more we'll be able to help people I hope even, even faster degree. So I always tell people that no matter what ails you right now, whether it be thyroid issues, or it might be gut issues or heavy metals or parasites, like you spoke about, most of those things can really be cleared up within 12 weeks to, so three to six months at the very most, that's the nice thing. But what we're finding is that we want to help people be able to maintain that for life as well. So there's a lot of programs, a lot of protocols. You can sometimes get short-term results, which is great. There's nothing wrong. You want to get rid of your symptoms, but you want to then say, okay, how can I now maintain this for life? So this is what I'll really spend the rest of my life working towards. And I love doing that. And I'm someone who gets to work and play at the same time. And as you said, then I also have my family. So when it's work time, it's work time. And then I'm also fortunate over the last couple of years to now actually have a home office. And so it's a pretty easy transition for me to go from, uh, you know, doctor of naturopathy to dad uh, in a matter of about five minutes. Perfect. Yes. Thank you for sharing all of that. Uh, You're actually just down the road from me. 
Uh, I'm at PGA National. You're pretty close by. We really wanted to do this interview in person. I'm sure we'll do, be doing another one. I think it's great being able to have your home office, have your kids close by, have that flexibility. That's really what we've seen, especially after you know 2020. Everything really shifted. I think it's like a third of the workforce is actually working from home now. I saw that statistic recently. One of the things I'll say about you, Dr. Stephen Cabral, is you are a natural teacher. You are a natural leader. And I can tell that you truly are living your divine mission and dharma. And when I come across people like yourself that just emit this, this energy, this is something that I study, not only looking great, right, with great skin, hair, makeup, outfits, body composition, but it's this energy. Now, I'd love to hear from you, what is radiance to you? And perhaps even maybe something you picked up in me that is a little bit different. Just curious about your definition of what radiance is. Yeah, so being in practice for a long time, so just until about 2020, meaning in-person practice, we would do about 20,000 appointments per year. I got to meet with a lot of individuals. So I would meet with about 2,000 of those appointments. Then I have an amazing team and they would meet with about 18,000. So I would help to oversee that. But I always saw a lot of people walk in and out of the practice every single day. And let's just say like whatever the subjective looks are aside of whatever you find to be appealing, every individual, um, not meaning not every single person that comes into the wellness center, but all different shapes and size and all that, you can tell when someone is feeling that purpose or that passion or that energy in life, meaning like without even knowing them. So I'll, I'll get to see so many people that walk by and I even notice this just in the street now or in the gym, like, oh, that's a person that I would get along with, that I would vibe with. And it's because whether they're in their ideal job or they're in their ideal relationship, whatever it is, they feel connected. They feel somewhat maybe at peace or they're looking to be at of service to others. And I don't know that if I exactly connect with each person that same way, but for me, what it is and radiance is for me, and I think it is for a lot of other people, you wake up and you're not looking to hit the snooze button. You're not necessarily looking to grab a lot of caffeine in the morning. What you do and how you live your life energizes you from the inside out. So it's not one of those things where you say, oh, beauty's from the inside out. It's actually saying, no, the outer beauty is created by the inner radiance. And the radiance, I consider that to be energy and light, essentially emanating from the body. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, actually, in Ayurveda, they have a definition of radiance, believe it or not. And I think this is the best definition I've ever come across. And I'd love your perspective on this as well. So through Ayurveda, the radiant body is the 10th body. We have our body, mind, spirit, energy, which are our first four bodies. And then there's other parts of us. The radiance is the 10th body. And what's interesting about this is that it's the electromagnetic projection into the world of all of your other systems and the quality at which they're operating. So say, for example, we're doing a, a consultation with one of my clients. She wants to improve her skin hydration, reduce skin redness, soften fine lines and wrinkles, get fuller hair, more energy. She's menopausal, so obviously that libido's shifted a little bit. From the test kits and supplements that you have, what are some of the standard types of protocols that can really help people, especially in perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, to keep their collagen and elastin which we lose when we lose our estrogen. Yeah, so a big part of it is in what I like to always refer to as the two main causes for disease in the body are deficiencies and toxicities. So for deficiencies, and we like to personalize everything. So there's a lot of great products out there, and it's not that they won't help individuals. It's that there's like 50 or 100 great products out there. So how do you know out of those 50 or 100 great products, which ones are right for you? So we run something called the big five labs and not everybody can afford necessarily maybe the big five labs, but they can do something like the starter kit. And so what you look at in those labs, are your vitamin levels, your mineral levels, heavy metals that you may have, and your overall gut health. And so that that's basically all part of the starter kit. Now there's another one that's called the stress mood and metabolism test. And all these can be done right at home. 
They can be done, of course, with my company, Equal Life, or they can be done with a local naturopathic doctor or an integrative health practitioner. And the stress and metabolism test actually looks at your estrogen and progesterone, your testosterone to DHEA, your cortisol throughout the day, so four times throughout the day, and then your thyroid, TSH, free T4, free T3, TPO antibodies. And then it looks at vitamin D and your blood sugar levels. So the reason why I bring that up and the other tests look at your food sensitivities from an IgG perspective, we can get into those if you like, and then omega-6 to omega-3s. If you want vital, you know, if you want that vitality to shine through, you need to make sure that you're not too high in inflammatory omega-6s, that you're not dealing with estrogen dominance, or as you're moving into menopause, low progesterone and low estrogen. Um, what we typically see with women uh, moving into estrogen is uh, moving into menopause is first estrogen dominance, which is normal estrogen typically, but low progesterone. And so they're getting a lot of the symptoms of uh, lowered mood, lower energy, lower libido, drier skin. Uh, they might start to get some adult-based acne around the chin or maybe even on the upper back. They might start to get a little bit maybe um, greasier here or oilier here. Uh, as well as maybe some thinning of the hair. And so we, we look at those as kind of telltale signs, but if we can run the labs, we want to run the labs. But at the same time, their body, as they're dropping in testosterone, they're dropping in DHEA, they may even be increasing in cortisol, especially in the second half of the day, their body's becoming more catabolic. And so as your body's becoming more catabolic, you need to begin to switch now to a little bit more of an anabolic state. And you have to be a little bit more careful. You actually have to make sure that your sleep is on point, not just being in bed for eight hours, but actually improving your deep sleep and your REM sleep, which is when the body's gonna repair itself. It's gonna be more of an anabolic state and start to rebuild that tissue. So all of this to say is you can take in all the great nutrients in the world, but you have to make sure that your body switches from the breakdown state, that's catabolism, to the anabolic building up state. And it's always a fine balance because you don't want to be too anabolic um, at the same time and you don't want to be too catabolic. So I'll pause there for a minute. I'm happy to go through any of those labs, what they mean, um, how inflammation, hormones, vitamins, minerals, all that affect the body. Yeah, it's funny when I go back to when I first learned about catabolic states, you know, there's this pause analogy, right? And then when you mentioned that, I also thought about the concept that so many of us are dysregulated from the positive and negative ionic perspective with the body's electromagnetics. And I'm obviously actually, if you're watching this, I had, we had a power outage in the middle of the night. I'm here on Vancouver Island visiting family. There's snow outside, still managed to make this happen, internet tethered through the phone. So I got a lot of uh, electromagnetics happening here, which also impact everything in the body as well. One of the things I love about what you're doing is the test kits that you have, they're really easy, they're really well priced, and you're doing an excellent job at, at making it simple in one easy place to access these various test kits to test minerals, to test deficiencies, everything that you mentioned. I'd love for you to get back into how we can actually place our bodies gently into more of an anabolic state, as you suggested, and some of the things that you mentioned about foods and food sensitivity, we have a lot of biohackers that listen here. And sometimes these food sensitivities can shift over time, depending on if we have the, the opportunity to adjust deficiencies, inflammation and things like that. So what tips do you have for us to move out of that catabolic state and more into an anabolic state and then overcome things like temporary food sensitivities? Sure. So one of the big things, especially in women that I see, is that they, when somebody becomes popular, such as intermittent fasting, there's typically good reason for it. So intermittent fasting moves our body into what's called a state of autophagy, um, or hope we get into a state of autophagy. We balance blood sugar level to a greater degree. We decrease mTOR, which is that anabolism. We start to increase AMPK, which helps us with the autophagy. It helps to kill cancer cells, viruses, improve the immune system. We start to boost our own levels of natural human growth hormone. So a lot of great benefits come from that. However, in our Western-based culture, our Western-based mindset, if a little is good, a lot must be better. And what I see is that this is detrimentally, detrimentally affecting, especially women in our practice. So if you do like a typical intermittent fast might be, let's say six o'clock at night or seven o'clock at night. Uh, and then you would usually go 12 hours. That's an intermittent fast. 
And so you might not start eating again until seven o'clock in the morning. And that would be fairly normal. Anywhere between 12 and 16 hours is a typical daily intermittent fast. But what happens is there's many people that are skipping breakfast and they're already in a stress state. So if you're in a relaxed state and you're not producing a high level of, let's say, norepinephrine or cortisol, then your bodies can pretty much just stay in more of a, let's call it, quote unquote, fat burning zone. And you're able to tap into that fairly easily. But if you get into a stress state, your body is producing cortisol, which is a glucocorticoid. So no matter what, you start to produce cortisol. And no matter what, your body starts to raise blood sugar levels. And it's going to take that from either stored liver glycogen, or it's going to start to break down your own tissue, namely muscle, in order to be able to get those glycogen reserves out. So what I've seen is that daily and intermittent fasting for women, uh, they seem to do really well at night, men, men as well. I'm not just saying women, but women's bodies are absolutely affected more than men's for the most part, you know, on average, uh, by going longer than skipping breakfast. So most women in our practice will go from six at night um, till about eight in the morning. It seems to be a really nice intermittent fast for most people. It's about 14 hours. There's no magic to 16 hours. 16 hours can be fantastic. You could go uh, maybe five in the five at night um, till nine in the morning, or maybe even uh, six at night to 10 in the morning, probably be the lazy and still get in your meals there per day. And the reason why I say that is that if you do skip breakfast, a lot, oftentimes people are just eating twice for the day, which again, could be okay. But when you look at it, then they're often deficient in protein. Now, some people overeat protein. There's no doubt about that. But if you're only getting in 40 grams to 50 grams of protein, it's probably not going to be enough, especially if you are a biohacker or you are someone that leads a, leads a pretty athletic lifestyle. You're not going to be able to keep up with the demands of that and at the same time if you're low carb. So I think we want to be careful with pushing our bodies too much into catabolism. And so I prefer a moderate overnight intermittent fast and then maybe a once a week longer, 24 hour if you'd like to do fast. And then you can do a quarterly longer fast for that, those greater intermittent fasting benefits. We've seen that uh, really work that balance between uh, catabolism and anabolism, and then also understanding body types. So in Ayurvedic medicine, they have the vata, they have the pizza, and they have the kapha. The vata body type, much more likely to drop into hypoglycemia, to lose weight rather than gain weight, or the kapha, more likely to gain weight rather than lose weight. So by knowing your body weight or your body type to a greater degree, you'll know if intermittent fasting is also better for you to do it a little bit longer or a little bit less. A vata body type will never be instructed to do 16 plus hours a day of intermittent fasting. Very stressful on the body. Where a kapha body type, they can do really well with a smaller dinner and then fasting that 16 hours or so un until they get to their breakfast meal. Mm -hmm, that's great. I definitely, there's been times in my life where fasting is just not great for my body. And then other times it's, okay, let's do a five to seven day long fast in the desert at altitude. Let's do this. And I did that about, mm -hmm. I think about, that sounded very Canadian. <laughs> uh, being here for a short period of time, you get the, the schwa back in your language. But when I did that long fast, that significantly shifted everything about me from my body composition to my mental capacity to the way that my skin looked, just my energy it was incredible. I still had some foods. It was probably about 400 calories, high protein, hydrogen water, still taking, you know, adaptogens and superfoods and things like that because I was still hiking. But then other times when I would fast, I would feel like, ah, I don't feel like my body wants this at this time. And then after the holidays, I did about four days of 18 hour fasts. And that's exactly what my body wanted. So when I get the, the sense of, okay, pain is creeping up a little bit, that means some inflammation, let's maybe do a longer fast. But for my type, it's, it's kind of intuitive. You don't want to push too hard, but when you get the nudge, you're having some pain, maybe some skin issues, do a bit of a longer fast. What, what do you think about that type of approach? Not being so rigid, because that's where I think a lot of people go wrong in the biohacking space, in the fasting space. Is there a little too extreme and rigid? What do you think about this flexibility? I think that for someone in your position where you know so much about health and you're so in tune with your body, it can work really well. For a lot of patients and wellness clients, they don't, they can't always, not everyone, but they can't always discern, um, am I anxious right now because I'm hungry um, or am I hungry, which is leading to anxiety 
uh, and what to do. So I, I find that in the beginning, our job is to <clears throat> empty that rain barrel to get people to a state of equilibrium, allow them to know what a healthy state feels like. Like this is true health. And, and I didn't even know. So I was sick from 17 years old to 27 years old. And when I got well at 27 years old, I met my mentor and I was sick for nine and a half years. And then I met my mentor and literally in six months I was better. She helped put the pieces of the puzzle together. It's not like I didn't know the pieces. I had read thousands of books. I'd gone to hundreds of over a hundred practitioners, conventional medicine and natural health, but she put the puzzle together and I'm like, oh, I get it. But even like I was better, I was fully better. All my labs were good, but it wasn't really until my early thirties, mid thirties that I'm like, oh, this is how I can feel. And now I'm in my mid forties and I feel better than I did then. So what we want to do is always up level our best. Having a little bit of a routine is great, but I agree with you. There'll be a day where I'll say, you know what? My body's telling me right now not to do a weight training, hard weight training workout, to do more of a fasting day, do a sauna, go for a walk, get to bed a little bit earlier. So like, listen, your body is very important. Now we can tell though, like why this affects some people and more than others. And we look at that stress from the metabolism test and we can actually see TSH climb above a two. Now in conventional medicine, they say TSH for your thyroid, thyroid stimulating hormone is normal between 0.5 and 5, but optimal is 0.5 to 2. And so once we see that like a 2.6, a 2.8, starting to get the lower mood, the lethargy, the grogginess, the brain fog, maybe some um, skin-based issues, skin rashes, we're like, yeah, like this, this fasting is now overdone. You felt great every day fasting for 16 hours or 18 hours when you did it the first three weeks. And now what? That Well, your body's not static. It's now tipped the other way. You're starting to go a little higher cortisol, a little lower thyroid. So those are things that we don't, we actually fine tune and look at the labs to say, let's not guess anymore. Let's test. Let's tell you exactly what you need. And, and so that's, that's how we approach it, but not overdoing it. It's really finding that state of equilibrium. Yes, absolutely. Which is so suiting to the name of your brand and your products, Equilife, Equilibrium. And one of the things about me is I, and for those of you who are tuning into the show, you've heard me say this many times. I love to go to events and meet the people behind the companies, right? Who are these people? What are they up to? Are they operating out of integrity? What type of energy are they giving off? Is this someone I want to align myself with? And as soon as I got into your event and saw the other companies that you work with, spent, you know, an hour talking to Robbie from Therasol, I was just, you know, fell in love with you and your team. And one of the things that's really neat about your company is that you saw a gap in the marketplace from what other companies were doing and thought to yourself, how can I make this better, which is how Equilife was, was born. And do you have anything else to add to why you've created this supplement and test kit brand and what was missing in your opinion from other companies that were that were doing this but how you made it better yeah so the the goal i never planned on doing any of this so i was in private practice um and it was still our practice is now virtual that's the only thing that's changed so i'm in private practice uh we opened our second location in 2012 and within six months, we were booked out. So, you know, we're at this, we have two locations in Boston, Massachusetts. We're doing Ayurvedic therapies, functional medicine, you know, functional nutrition, personal training. We've got infrared sauna, like way back in the day before it was, you know, even a thing. Uh, Sunlight was like literally the only brand. And we, were, we would run that sauna for like 16 hours a day, literally. And, and it was amazing. So we kind of brought that to the Boston community, which is very conventional medicine based. So I didn't want to open up additional locations. I was happy. Um, we were booked out. Everything's good. Life is good. Uh, I've got a team of 22 people. And in 2016, I started my podcast and we started to get people from outside of Boston, which was maybe 10% of our practice outside of Boston. Uh, but now maybe 50% people wanted to do it virtually. And I had no way to ship them at home lab tests. I had no way to ship them protocols and, and all the different things that we were looking to do. And I said, okay, let's start to figure this out. And that's all that it was. It was myself and my front desk team that would literally bring a, a pull cart to the uh, United States Postal Service store, which was luckily only about maybe 500 yards away from our location. And every day we would bring labs and we would ship them. And it, was, it wasn't easy like that by any stretch of the imagination. So then I started to team up with 
great business people, meaning like, hey, help me help me get this to people. And so each year we just probably brought online about, we probably used about a hundred, well, I can tell you now it's about 150 different products, protocols, labs, et cetera, that we used in a real functional medicine practice. And that's never existed online. And, and it, uh, I believe that we're the only company doing it at scale, meaning we shipped to 27 countries around the world. And it's like working with a doctor, with a functional medicine practitioner uh, right inside of their office, yet we can do it virtually um, anywhere in the world. And so that's what was missing in the marketplace. There's lots of great functional medicine brands. Uh, there's also a lot of great lab tests. But to put it all together in one practice that's seamless, that was the challenging part. And I can say is that, I mean, li literally, like this is what I love to do. Every dollar from Equalife goes back into the company. So I take zero dollars out of the company. Every dollar goes back into formulations, to new technology, to being able to register labs easier, all of those things. And uh, yeah, it's what we love to do. And I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll be doing this for the next 30, 35, 40 years. So this is a long-term project. Beautiful. And I, I was fortunate to receive the behind the scenes background on you with uh, someone near and dear to you that's been really instrumental in getting this off the ground too. I love hearing, you know, the humble startings yes. of putting all the packages together, all the test kits together, myself included, you know, been there also. And then it's like, how can I help more people and do this in a, in a, a better way and innovate? I love to connect with leaders like yourself who are innovating and you're doing it from a place of integrity to help people. And it's very clear with who you surround yourself with as well. So I just want everyone listening to know that about you. And with your podcast, your book, The Rain Barrel Effect, uh, my mother, she also really loves your book too. She picked it up and read it and just like, this Stephen Cabral, he's a beautiful man. I'm like, yeah, you know, he's a great guy. I hung out with him the other week. <laughs> I know, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> it's always so lovely when our family and um, loved ones, they see sort of who we're connecting with and really what we're doing, because that's sometimes the, the tricky part when you are doing something that is so new to have those around you really grasp what you're doing and really how you're impacting people. And even just my friends and colleagues who are IHP um, either their practitioners that have trained under you, you know, they're thriving in their work too. And it's kind of like this paying it forward just with helping people be healthier. I think this is an incredible business model. And I love seeing people like yourself thrive with your family and with your business and, and all of that. So getting back to radiance, we have the body, mind, spirit, energy. It, and now with this understanding that radiance is the 10th body, it's the electromagnetic projection of all of the other systems. If someone were to be on the quest to be as radiant as possible, right? Not just in the physical form, the physical form follows from the internal. What would you do? Well, so when I talked about the de-stress protocol in my book um, that you mentioned, the rain barrel effect, the first half is how we get sick, how we become unwell, and that's internally and externally. And then the program, and I wrote that book because, again, we were booked out and I want to get that information out there. My goal was always to do that with the podcast, with the book, is to get people information that I believe, though, is not just um, fair, right? Fair is the first half of the book. Here's what's going on. There's EMFs. There's pharmaceuticals literally in our tap water. There's heavy metals like aluminum tap water. Th those are real things to worry about, but we have to have a plan. And the plan is the de-stress protocol. So it's diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional base balance, scientifically backed supplements, and a success mindset. So when you look at that, you see stress, you see emotional balance, you see success mindset. So the plan isn't just physical, like eat better. Okay. Eating better is great, but you're not going to be able to stick with it, be consistent if everything isn't gelling together, is it, if it isn't cohesive. And a big part of that is our mental-based state. So if we're talking about let's look beyond the physical, I always say that I, I was always at my best even when sick. So I was at my worst when I was dejected, I would relapse again, and, and I had autoimmune issues, all sorts of um, type 2 diabetes, Addison's disease. POTS, myalgic encephalomyelitis, which is basically flu-like symptoms all the time. And it was a terrible, terrible existence. But sometimes I would actually feel well. And I would feel well when I had hope, 
when I was going to see a new practitioner and they would enliven me with, with their energy and that hope. And, and they were always doing their best for me. Maybe it wasn't the right answer, but I felt, I felt energized by that. Or I was working on a project and the project was something in growth and self-development. So I always tell people, even if you're not in the spot that you want to be right now with the hair, skin, nails, or overall physical body, what you want to look at is what other parts of you can you develop? What are the things that you can wake up each day and begin to work on and grow? And not necessarily just for the goal itself. And I don't want to say just for the journey, but it's actually the actions that you're taking on a daily basis, right? So it's like, I, I was speaking with my daughter. She's, um, she just turned 11 years old and we were setting New Year's goals. And I said to her, I said, okay, this is your goal. And I only want you to forget about your goal. All I want you to think about are the different actions you're going to take on a daily basis that if you were to do those, hitting your goal would be inevitable. And she's like, oh, oh she never really thought about like that because we all get stressed about reaching a goal, like clearer skin, right? Balanced hormones. All right, well, those things happen when you follow the game plan. And following the game plan is like, oh, I can do that. Like, here's the objective. Oh, I can eat this. I can fast. I can do this. I can do this. And that way you don't need to worry about the eventual outcome. It will be there because we don't always know the timeline, but we do know the blueprint. And if we follow that blueprint, I know in time, everybody will achieve what they're looking to achieve in their oh, life. Oh, so eloquently stated. I'm definitely in alignment with you where we have this vision or this mission of who we desire to be, what we desire to accomplish, the impact that we are really excited to create. We know that endpoint. We just don't know what the journey is going to be like. It's like this big hero's journey, right? You have the challenge, you meet the mentors, you overcome the obstacle, you reap the reward. It's always the journey in that. And so for those of you listening who maybe are going through something right now or are feeling pretty good and just looking to get even better, just as Dr. Stephen Cabral said, purification, air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, detoxing, supporting the body, making sure you're not deficient in anything is a very clear approach to take to cultivate your radiance, improve your body composition, sleep better, improve your relationships. You will literally become a more pleasant human to be around when you also address your internal, not just your external. So that was a great answer. Thank you so much, Dr. Siva Cabral. Do you have any closing words for us here today? I'd love for, for you to share with everyone where they can listen to your show, learn more about you. I know everyone can pick up their products over at theschoolofradiance.com. Use code RADIANCE. Thank you so much for extending that for everybody here. But how can really people stay in your world and stay connected to the brightness and radiance that you are sharing? Thank you. I appreciate um, you again having me on and, and allowing me the platform. So I would share just in closing words is that um, everyone always believes that they're different, that they're the case that can't be solved. And I understand that because that was me for nine and a half years. But what I would say is this, is that there's always an answer. Literally, there is always an answer and you just have to stick with it. You, you just, you can't give up. You just have to continue to work the course. And as you said, there's ebbs and flows to life. You're going to have low points. There's no doubt about it. We all do. But hopefully we move through those low points quickly and we move back to some higher ground. So that's the thing. The fastest way to be able to figure out what it is that ails you is personalized natural medicine. That's basically it. So it's finding out what are your food sensitivities? What are your hormone levels like? What's your thyroid level like? What about your cortisol, vitamins and minerals and heavy metals, your gut health? And all of those can be run right at home the privacy of your own home. They're not done through your medical doctor and they're not done uh, through health insurance. So it enables you that privacy and it also gives you a specific one-on-one uh, -on -one personalized plan. So I know that you'll link up all, all the links, but people can find out uh, about what I do in my book and the podcast just at my website, which is stephencabral.com. It's Stephen with a PH. Uh, the podcast is called The Cabral Concept. And uh, that's a daily show that brings you just about 15 minute episodes on all things natural health, whether it be Ayurveda, functional medicine, et cetera. And you do it in such a beautiful way. It's not, oh, you got to do this to do this. And if you do, don't do this, then you're going to miss out. It's all very positive and uplifting and educational and informative. And of course, this is not medical advice, educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. And the resource at 
stephencabral.com, his show, Rain Barrel Effect book. Definitely check him out. And thank you so much for being on the show. Dr. Stephen Cabral, pleasure to connect. Look forward to seeing you in person at some point soon. Maybe we'll do some fun off-roading together or some type of adventuring with families. <laughs> and thank you everyone for good. listening. Yes, absolutely. Thanks everyone for listening. And if you haven't heard of Dr. Stephen Cabral yet, definitely he is a human to follow who is also going to, in my opinion, be supportive in keeping you on the straight and narrow, no matter what, to help you become your most vibrant version. Thanks everyone for joining. Be sure to subscribe, share this episode with a friend or family member, and we'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.